एस चांद प्रेजेंट्स एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एस पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम This is the second part of the video, which is manufacturing process. In the first part, we have seen the introduction to the process, and also we have seen the classification of the manufacturing process. In the second part, we'll be learning about the manufacturing processes, namely casting and machining. Welcome to West Chand Academy, and I am Anmol Bhatia. Today we will be learning the concept of basics of manufacturing processes in this video. For detailed concept clarity, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing. The link of the book is there in the description box below. So in this part of the video, we will be learning about casting and machining, which comes under the primary and the secondary manufacturing processes. So let us first look at the casting process. As you can see in the diagram, in this you can see that we have a mold cavity and this mold cavity is created in between the two parts of the flask namely the first part which is the cope the upper part and the drag which is the lower part so we have two parts of the flask one is the upper part which is called as the cope and the lower part which is called as a drag and both of them would be filled with sand and inside the sand we will create a cavity now in that cavity we will be pouring the material which is the liquid material and that liquid material will flow in a fashion so that this cavity gets filled so here we what happens we have a pouring basin which is this and in that pouring basin we pour in the material that material will flow inside this sprue base with the help of this channel which is called as sprue and with the help of runner in connection with the skim bob it goes into the mold cavity now in the mold cavity when this gets filled the extra material comes out from here with the help of this riser so from riser we can see that the material is being filled inside the mold so what is casting process casting is basically uh, the process in which we heat the metal to the liquid state and then that metal is converted into uh, the solid state that liquid metal is converted into the solid state by adopting these processes now the major applications of this casting process i have told you that we melt the metal and we pour that metal into the mold so that the required shape is produced let's say we have an example uh, we have some examples in in uh, in terms of the production uh, with the help of the casting process uh, the first and foremost example is the case of a piston so the piston that is used in automobiles that is uh, produced with the help of the casting process additionally we have the cylinders which is also used in the automobiles that is produced with the help of the casting process these castings may vary from simple shapes to the complex shapes so we can produce the shapes which are simpler and those shapes can vary to the complex ones if we are producing the components with the help of casting process then these can vary from the thin sections which are in mm to a very thick sections which can be uh, in in terms of the units of meters so from mm it the section thickness varies uh, from mm to meters additionally these small castings can be produced and a larger castings can be produced so let's say if we want to produce uh, the casting which is of few grams in weight and we also want to produce some casting which is uh, uh, in the form of tons so those components which are less heavy or the components which are more heavy can be produced with the help of this casting processes then we look at certain metals uh, which we can uh, use in castings so the category of the metals that we can use are ferrous metals and the non ferrous metals if i talk about uh, the ferrous metals so 
these ferrous metals are the metals which have high melting temperatures and the non ferrous metals are the metals which have the low melting temperatures so we have two categories one in which uh, there is a requirement of more heat to melt the metal and there is a requirement of lesser heat in order to melt the metal then we have some examples like we have the case of cast iron which is which falls under the category of the ferrous metal then cast steel which also falls under the category of the ferrous metal then cast stainless steels you can see uh, the objects which can be manholes or the machine beds they can be manufactured uh, with the help of the metal which is the cast iron then cast steels are uh, specifically uh, used for these turbine blades and so on for the stainless steels and non ferrous metals are those metals which have low melting temperatures let's say for an example magnesium alloys or aluminium alloys or zinc alloys or let's say lead or tin these alloys and some metals would have the lesser or low melting temperatures so they are, comes under the category of the non ferrous metals now uh, as i told you that the casting is a primary manufacturing process so in order to get the primary ingot we have to melt the metal and pour that metal into the mold so here uh, the final shape is dependent on the mold that uh, we are using to produce uh, the item and uh, this this casting process has certain limitations also and what limitations it has majorly the dimensional variability is there let's say if i am pouring the metal into the mold and uh, when the casting solidifies or when the liquid metal solidifies it leads to the formation of a bigger sized material or maybe a smaller sized material because of the shrinkage so there is a variability in the dimension so no doubt i need to go for the secondary manufacturing process always then the surface finish that is being produced with the help of the casting process is not very good because in the casting process the next step would be machining that's why the next step would be machining uh, the process is labor in intensive because uh, we have a majority of the materials like cope drag or we have certain screws so in order to handle the material we have to use the labor or the manpower and disposing of uh, the products or the waste material is also an issue then this process involves the melting of materials and uh, this melting becomes sometimes uh, sensitive to the reactions so whenever uh, some melting is being done and we are pouring the metal into the mold so in that particular duration there would be certain uh, reactions that would come across in the picture because this process is very sensitive or this process becomes very sensitive because it comes in contact with the open environment and whenever it gets converted into the solid state it is very much prone to the defects and if the things are not controlled properly so the defect would arise in that particular situation so these were the basic limitations of the casting process then talking about the same ferrous and non ferrous metals these melting temperatures would no doubt uh, determine the ease of melting or the furnace that would be using in order to melt those metals so this particular effect is being taken or encountered with the help of the metals that we are working upon so looking at certain applications of uh, the casting process we have the case of piston and the cylinder and that answers to my question that i have asked in the initial part of the video that the piston is being manufactured by which process so piston is being manufactured with the help of casting process no doubt certain machining process would also be incorporated into the account then we have the pump casing which is being manufactured with the help of uh, this casting process 
Additionally, this is an example of an engine block that is uh, manufactured with the help of the casting process and it is done in one go. So this is an example of a long casting that is being created in one go. Now let us come to the introduction of ma machining process. In order to explain the machining process to you, let us consider an example uh, or the diagram which is there from the book. In this diagram, you can see uh, that the workpiece is being fitted inside a chuck and this is an, a, a case of a lathe machine and it is there in between the two centers namely live center and the dead center. It is called live center because the workpiece keeps on rotating here and it is called dead center because the workpiece or this part does not rotate. So one the chuck part moves and here this tailstock part does not move. That means the workpiece that we have keeps on rotating. So workpiece rotates here in this uh, manner and there is a single point tool and that tool is being inserted into the workpiece that is called as a depth of cut and uh, from uh, there the we provide a linear motion to the tool so that this metal removal takes place and the metal is being removed in the form of chips. So what happens here if I let's say have uh, the workpiece which is of let's say 20 mm diameter and I want to convert that diameter into 15 mm. So I need to opt for this particular manufacturing process which is called as machining. It can be applicable for the processes uh, uh, which involve cylindrical jobs or it, uh, which involves the, uh, the square jobs or cuboidal structures. So what is this machining process? Machining process is basically a process of metal removal and as I have told you that chips are being removed or chips are being released in uh, this kind of setup or this kind of process. Now in order to have the refined uh, structures or refined shapes or if you want to uh, machine the complex shapes, so this processes cannot be useful, may or may not be useful but nowadays we use CNC machining that would be explained in, in the course of uh, this uh, presentation. Then uh, we have to classify this metal removal process. So we have certain uh, criteria in which we classify this metal removal processes. So the first thing is machining which is I have told you which is the conventional method in which you remove the material uh, with the help of the tool and there must be some relative motion between the tool and the workpiece. Then you have abrasive processes and non-traditional processes. If I talk about uh, the machining processes, uh, it has shear deformation. So as I explained in the diagram, the diagram uh, explains the situation in which the chips were released and there was a clear cut situation of the shear deformation. Then we have the abrasive processes in which we use fine or coarse abrasives uh, in order to machine the, the particular raw material. Then we have non-traditional machining methods in which there can be the application of this mechanical energy or the thermal fusion energy or electrochemical processes in order to uh, machine the material. So we make use of the other processes namely the chemical processes or the thermal processes or the electrochemical processes in order to uh, machine the material that we want to process. So there are certain examples of those processes that we have classified recently like we in the machining we have an example of turning or drilling or milling or shaper or planer. So these all comes under this conventional machining methods. Then in, in terms of abrasive processes we have the grinding process or the honing process or the lapping process. Then as far as these non-traditional methods are concerned we have these electrochemical machining or we have the water jet machining or the laser beam machining or electron beam machining which is used to cut the materials. Then there is a commercial importance of this machining processes. Number one we have or this process have the ability to machine a wide range of materials namely titanium or tungsten. So these materials can be easily removed with the help of this machining processes. The metals that we can process are example is let's say the copper, magnesium, nickel, steel all these materials can be processed with the help of these machining methods. And then there are certain materials which can be machined with the help of this process. Let's say plastics or let's say composites or ceramics. 
These can also be uh, machined with the help of this conventional machining methods. Then uh, the process has certain versatility. Number one, it can produce variety of shapes like it can produce the flat surfaces, it can produce the cylindrical surfaces or it can cut the slots or threads can be ob obtained with the help of these processes. And also this process has a very close control on the dimensional part or the tolerance part so that this uh, accuracy can be achieved uh, in the product aspect. Then the surface roughness is very low that means you achieve a greater amount of surface finish when you opt for this uh, machining processes. But this process has certain limitations. Number one, it leads to the formation of chips. That means wastage is much more in this process. Then the process is quite slow and time consuming. And the material that we want to remove is in the form of layers. That means, let's say an example of the similar situation of the lathe machine in which we have the cylindrical job and we want to remove the material uh, which is let's say 20 mm and we want to convert it into 5 mm. So we cannot directly uh, machine it from 20 to 5. We need to give certain depth. Let's say we have to give a depth of 20 mm initially and convert it into uh, 20, from 20 to 18. And then again, we have to give a depth of cut of 2 mm and then we need to convert it into 16 and then so on and so forth so that the surface finish is achieved. That's why this, this process is slower and time consuming. And also I have told you that it is a secondary process. Casting was a primary process and this machining is a secondary process. Uh, now uh, the main concept which is there inside this machining is the relative motion between the tool and the workpiece. So we'll have certain examples in which we show uh, that there is a relative motion between the tool and the workpiece. Let's say if I talk about turning. So turning is majorly done for cylindrical jobs. And then we have the situation of drilling or shaper planer. In that also we have certain motion of the workpiece and the tool. Let's say we have this situation. We have the situation of the cylindrical job. In, in terms of the cylindrical job, the workpiece is rotating here and the tool is stationary. So we keep the tool stationary and uh, there is a relative motion between the two which is the workpiece rotatory and the tool is stationary. Then uh, we come to the case of drilling. In case of drilling as you can see that there is a drill and there is a workpiece in which we want to drill a hole on. The drill is rotatory, uh, the motion of the drill is rotatory and the workpiece is stationary here. The third example is of the shaper in which you can see that the workpiece is stationary and the tool is moving from uh, moving in this manner after applying certain depth of cut. The tool is moving in the forward and backward manner uh, and the workpiece is stationary. In, in case of planar, it is opposite of the shaper. So this is the, the situation in which uh, there is a particular motion between the workpiece and the tool so as to uh, obtain the final products. So we come to the end of the second part of the video in which we have learnt uh, the manufacturing processes such as casting and machining. If you want to have the concept clarity, you can refer to the book by S. Chand Publishing. The link of the book is there in the description box below. If you find the video interesting, you can like, share, subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for future updates. Thank you. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.